Hi, my name is David. If you think short videos about the secrets of art collecting are a great idea, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I will keep making them. Before I get into my two most foundational rules of acquiring any object, I want to I want to I want to state a quick disclaimer. If you find a work of art that you love and it's easy and affordable and it's not a scam, then 100% go for it. These rules give me a little security, give me something to hold on to when a price makes me uncomfortable. It's a fair price, and we'll talk about what that means later, but nonetheless, I find security in these two rules. These rules also often break ties when I'm considering multiple objects or help me peer into the future, if that's something you are interested in doing. Rule number one. A work of art must look better in person than it does in any photograph. And this is something I legitimately test. In the contemporary art world, you're often shown JPEGs or PDFs before you go view a work in person. And, and my first thing that I'm thinking about when I view that work in person is, is it better than it is in the photograph that I previously saw? And it's not predictable and it's not logical, it is something I legitimately test. The best analogy I can give that I think everybody can relate to is some people have a photograph on their desk at work of a loved one or a pet or a favorite vacation spot. And even though that photograph is the most ideal lighting and millisecond that represents that person, animal or place, you still look forward to coming home. Do you know what I'm saying? The, the, the thing that the photograph is representing is better than the photograph. And I want works of art in my home that, that do that for me, that I cannot wait to round the corner and be in the presence of. I know this sounds weird, but I'm not purchasing an image, I'm purchasing an object. And so the fastest, most efficient way to test that is by measuring how I feel about it in a photograph versus how I feel about it in real life. Rule number two, a work of art must be better the second time I see it than the first time, regardless of how I feel about it the first time, which is nuts because I own some things that I did not like the first time I saw them, but then the second time I saw them, I liked them a little bit more. And the third time, I liked them a little bit more. There's nothing wrong with loving a, a work of art when you first see it, but you're not buying your first impression. You're buying a trajectory over time. And I think if you're interested in, in purchasing the future, if you're interested in a, in a work of art that will sustain you for the rest of your life into multiple generations, I'm looking for a trajectory. And so I test that by looking at an artwork once and then coming back to it and seeing if and how my experience of it has changed. You can test this in any museum, by the way, go find a work of art and go see everything else in the museum and then come back to that work of art and, and, and be honest with yourself if the artwork is less the same or has improved. It's rare when it improves, but when I find it, when an artwork fulfills both of these two rules, that's something I can live with and grow with and love for the rest of my life. If you want more tips on purchasing art, my sort of decision-making rules and understanding price strategy and, and how to determine if a price is fair for an object, give this video a thumbs up, shoot me a comment, and I will keep making them. If you wanna learn more about me uh, and everything I do in New York City, uh, links are in the description.